Stella and welcome back to another video from the Aurora Isles. Today we're going to be working on this massive squid farm, seeing if we can get it looking closer to being finished. But first, I wanted to start off the episode with the digging of the grass and dirt and making ourselves a brand new road coming from spawn. This is the new roads that are going to be interconnecting all of the areas here in the world. So something that I really wanted to do, adding a little bit of lore, is that this whole world is interconnected. There is ways to be able to get to every single place. Eventually, we'll add a train station like we did in the last episode over at the Winter District. We'll be adding one here at Spawn so we can interconnect. You can catch a train from Spawn all the way over to the Winter District, as well as hop on a boat or walk your way over. So as you can see, we have this pathway. It is made up of gravel, stone, andesite, cobblestone and some moss blocks. Now the reason we added the moss blocks in here was for the hidden lighting. I love the new carpet blocks. They are absolutely amazing and allow us to add so much more detail in our builds. So this is the Xeros map that we use quite often to show you guys bits and pieces of the world so you guys can get a bit of an overlook as to where everything is. So today's episode is going to be mainly surrounding this cactus farm up here. Uh, we're going to be looking at that a little bit later on. Uh, but this, as you can see, this grey line coming all the way down from spawn, all the way across to the volcano, the slime farm here, and then down to the Valentine's Day district. So with that long intro, I'm sorry guys, we are going to go jump straight into the building. Let's go over to the cactus farm and get right into it. So this is just a little update. Uh, so far, we've got one side in, we've got the other side kind of in and I wanted to show you just a little bit of the building behind the scenes. So something that I really wanted to do was focus on having a bit of a temple feel but I'm gonna just pause here so I can show you guys. We have these bigger pillars out the front here just giving a bit of accent. Um, something that I have started to really work with recently is using multiple layers of depth, not just the one block um, going back and really using multiple blocks to create this level of depth and bringing a highlight to each build. It also allows you more space to kind of work with. So something for example is we've got the pillars out the front, then we work one block back just to add this little circular section and then again we've got one, two and three blocks allowing us the ability to add things like stairs which are really really good um, use of depth depth blocks as well as some slabs and just adding full blocks as well and it's already taken me four hours so you know how I said oh we're gonna be like building as much as we can in a week but four hours four hours just for this and and that this is gonna be quite a bit of work I I can already see it Another thing that I wanted to direct your attention to is to add a breaking line through your builds so let me just land and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean so just jumping into free cam mode, uh, you can see that there is quite a lot of detail down here in the middle uh, or down on the bottom. And you're not going to want to put straight on top another big lot of detailing blocks. That's going to prevent your eye from being directed across the whole build. It's just going to look like a hot mess and you don't really want to do that. So what we're going ahead and done is add this just little detail up the top here to break up both sections. So we'll be placing this bottom section on top of this as well. Um, but we're going to go ahead and build this bit on this bit. And we're also going to be playing hoppity hop don't or oh, parkour I guess is more the word uh, where we're not <laughs> where we're having to make sure that we don't fall down I mean it's not too big of an issue but it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt so we gone ahead and added the white in behind the diorite walls and now it is time to add the feature of this area which is the blue that goes in between each of these white pillars so we're gonna go ahead and add that now and now we have the accent blocks in. Okay, so the next part of this is a really simple trick that I have learned over my time playing Minecraft is to simply place a regular stair block and right on top we add a smooth quartz block. And well, there we go. Simply enough, adding in just a few blocks. What is that? Like 10 tall blocks adds a huge amount of difference to a build. This is going to probably take me 
I'm gonna take a good guess and say about another four hours. So we have had to take a quick break from the building so that we can get a bunch of ender rods which require these bad boys. We need to get as many of the blaze rods as we can. Unfortunately, because this is not really a actual farm, I have to do this manually. So I'm kind of at the moment allowing for more space uh, by adding in an obsidian floor and then just waiting for these guys to spawn in and kind of wreck me at the moment. As you can see, wearing the good old chest plate instead of the wings so that we don't get absolutely annihilated by getting touched by these guys. It is not okay to touch me. Naughty. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep doing this, keep expanding out this floor, um, and hopefully walk away with quite a few stacks of end rods. Oh, sorry, blaze rods. Not, not end rods. We need to make end rods, but we need the blaze rods to make the end rods. That, that, that's what we're doing. Uh, I forgot to put my wings back on. Well, there's another uh, death to the counter. I was actually going over to get a shulker box, which I mean, now it's, it's a good thing. Luckily, we have our good backup box here. I genuinely think if you have a long-term world, definitely getting yourself a backup box is a really good idea. It allows for, for exactly this situation. I can't remember which mod allows this latest death counter, but it is so, so nice because we can just kind of fly straight towards it and you know exactly where your stuff is. And in this case, it's splattered everywhere on the floor. Well, let's pick it up before it all despawns. I nearly did it again. I'm so used to wearing my wings. I nearly, I nearly splattered. Luckily this time I had a few extra hearts on me before I made the leap. I never, never, ever, 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 ever said I was a professional Minecraft player. I just want this known. I've never said it. Here we are again on the floor without my wings. I, this is going to happen a lot. Nope, nope, not today, buddy. <coughs> not today. So I ended up going for about an hour and we got just close to 18 stacks of blaze rods. Uh, and we've just come over to the smelting area, which I think we're going to come over and actually fix this up in the next episode. It has currently got a lot of copper in here. I don't even think it's taking any of the chorus fruit at all. Um, but we are going to just place in the chorus fruit because we need popped chorus fruit. And then with the popped chorus fruit, uh, we can make end rods. I know a lot of people actually don't know this recipe. So all you need is chorus fruit, put it in the smelter and some blaze rods. Uh, you're going to make it a certain way. There we go. Blaze rods on top, pop chorus fruit down the bottom, and it gives you uh, four. So for, four, uh, for a full stack of blaze rods and a full stack of pop chorus fruit, we get four lots of end rods. I'm just going to sit here and wait for all of this to smelt. But whilst this finishes smelting, let's go back over to the cactus farm and finish the building. Let's go. We have almost got the first full layer of the whole area done, but I actually want to steer towards these. We are going to be making up some custom trees here. I'm actually excited to get some of these done. I have yet to do a similar design style to this, so it'll be interesting to do up a bunch of these where you can just see this like big uh, trigger sticking out of a pot. Basically, that's what we're going to be doing. And with a boop. We have two rows of trees in. I end up adding in another one just here at the front of the area because it looked a bit, bit desolate. But for now, we actually have to move on from this area. Uh, and I got to show you guys a few things that we've been working on a little bit further away. So we're flying over just over the storage area. Behind us would be Rucky's build over there. And if we keep going just a little bit further, we will see this masterpiece come into view. This was our celebration house for one year of being a partner over on the Twitch. So thank you guys for being a massive support over there if you're from there. If you haven't already been over there, go check out the link in the description in the link tree. Um, but behind us is the build. Let me give you guys a little bit of a look. 
this is our, as I said, one year partner anniversary build. And we decided to use a bit of a different gradient that I don't really see around a bunch, which is red brick, red terracotta, mangrove wood, fading into the crimson wood, into magenta. Uh, and then I believe that's purple terracotta, uh, pink wool, and then going into the glazed pink terracotta. And then finally the white terracotta all the way at the top of that roof there. Um, so let me show you some elements that I really like about this build. Things that I harp on about in my Twitch streams and in the videos is making sure to add depth to your build. You will hear me harp on about this all the time. Now, one of the things that I have learned over my time building is to add at least three blocks worth of depth. Unless you're going for something like a really modern build, uh, most of these builds really work with multiple layers of depth. So adding things like one block of an overhang for the roof, even if you want to add another block, it works really well. Uh, things like adding a simple stair, a couple of fence posts, and a wall down the bottom to just give that little piece of wool a bit of a breakup point. Also things like adding in a block inset one block into the wall uh, and also adding your windows one block into the wall. These are all things that allow builds to come together into a much more fashionable space and this is something that I have had to learn myself. Another thing is you don't always have to go for symmetry. We love symmetry in Minecraft, everyone does, but it doesn't have to be constant. You can break up builds by adding things like a jut out in one third of it uh, and then two thirds being back and one third on the other side or quarters, whatever. I, I'm i not good at maths, okay? You guys get this. But adding things like the window panes on different sides and also adding differences within the windows. Here we have a space with some dirt and some fences on the front of it. Or oh, sorry, signposts and the azalea leaves there. Whilst this side just has the barrels and a glazed pink terracotta bot down the bottom. But what I want to show you guys today and what I want to work on around here is adding in a heap of hot air balloons. Something that I've never done and I really, really want to do and I've been planning for the longest time to do is hot air balloons. So let's do that today. I've gone ahead and made a list of all the things we need and collected them. I've also got myself some scaffolding. And no, not dirt. I know people poop on the scaffolding block. I actually like using it, so we're going to be using that today. Fly up here whoop, and make our way a bit further up. I have gone ahead and loaded up a plots map. Uh, so this is a website that I'll link down in the description below. And it should be able to give us a sphere that will help us build these hot air balloons. Now, I've never actually built one of a hot air balloon in Minecraft before, so I'm a little nervous. This is all part of the building design and style, so I will probably be walking you guys through this whilst I learn this. So I am also going to probably jump into a time-lapse mode for at least the first one, uh, and then I'll show you guys what I did uh, to be able to build these uh, hot air balloons up and into the sky. And there was the last few carpets to finish off our very first hot air balloon here in the world. Whoop! Don't hit those block stells. Uh, this actually ends up being a little bit more difficult than I expected. Uh, but this is what it looks like. I ended up using the website called Plots uh, to be able to create the sphere up the top. And it was simply just adding in another couple of wool blocks to give it the structure and connect it to the basket. Now, I wanted the basket to be a bit thicker. I have seen quite a few designs where there is only like one to two blocks, but I wanted just a little bit thicker base on our basket. So I've gone ahead and added a set of trapdoors just below, uh, a set of full blocks, note blocks, and then our stairs and trapdoor on top. Now, if I could add one thing to this is probably a bit more color. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in a little bit, uh, but I have got no more wool because I just used it to make carpets to spawn proof the top. But with that, we're gonna jump into a time lapse and we're gonna make a whole bunch more hot air balloons floating around in the sphere around here. And we'll be right back.
balloons up in the air now. I'm really happy with how these turned out. We have a giant hot air balloon over here for one of the beautiful humans uh, who was on the live stream. We also have a couple of smaller ones dotted around the area flying high up in the sky. I really like how these turned out. There is one over here that's a little bit dodgy, but we are going to go with the fact that this one was coming down a little bit. Uh, if you guys haven't seen a hot air balloon, they kind of have like this big bulge at the top when they have got all the hot air going in them. And the way that they are released down is by releasing that hot air. And it kind of makes it a little bit more like a cone or a little bit longer rather than rounder. So that's what we're gonna say happened with that one. Because trying to re rebuild these in air is really, really, really difficult. We also have a big one here for the one year anniversary of being a Twitch partner, which is what the house was built for. So I wanted to create the one tethered to the house behind us and I think it actually turned out really cool. I did have to play around with that a little bit and it's a little lopsided but it's fine. We'll, you can't really tell. But with that we actually have to start building in a pathway. So what we're gonna do this time is create a pathway from near the storage room along these two hilltops, create a bridge across here and then to this house here. But to do that, I need some moss. And unfortunately, at this point in time, I don't have a moss farm. So we need to go do some quick mossifying of the area and I will be back once we get enough moss because, you know, it, the grind never stops when it comes to building, does it? You always need some type of block. And because this is single player, I need to gather all those blocks myself. Unfortunately, it is a dreary day here in our Minecraft world, but we have actually got ourselves the first part of this roadway now officially in. We are just going to be heading over to the top of this mountain and this is where we're going to start adding in the bridge instead of kind of going down and all the way through here. I thought it'd be easier just to create a bit of a quick, easy pathway straight over to that side and then we'll hook up to the front of this house over there. But I'm going to do that and jump back into the time-lapse mode. We are just putting the last few carpets down and officially this area will can be completely done as you saw via the time lapse we have the bridge completed now i have to do a little bit of moss carpeting and moss placing behind the base of this area but we're done guys let's do a quick flyover and show you guys what this looks like in the completed area we now officially have all of our hot air balloons. We have the house in, the bridge, and all of a pathway coming back down towards the storage room, which is the part of this build that I was really excited for, is to start connecting in the world. And I finally feel like after 19,000 days in this world, over 18 months, we are finally starting to get to the point where everything is starting to become interconnected. But with this view behind us, I think that's where we're going to leave the rest of this episode for today. Thank you guys for watching until the very end. If you liked the episode, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It does help out the algorithm and helps push the videos to more people. As well, if you want to watch more of these videos, hit make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.